Hi folks, welcome to the new track guide of the Super Formula Light and we are at Hockenheim Ring. Good little circuit. Turn one is very fun in the dry and terrifying in the wet. So uh, yeah, let's crack on with it. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's track guide and we're at the Hockenheim Ring, which is an interesting little circuit. It's fabulous in the dry. This thing has a lot of grip, uh, but it's a little bit interesting in the wet because there's some corners where it's very difficult to get off the racing line, the last two to be sure. But as always, this is the track guide of the dry and of course the wet sessions where we try and show you the racing line and what puddles to miss. I said puddles in a lot of the uh, last track guide last week and I'm going to say it again because they are an important part of wet weather racing. Trying to avoid them in certain locations is going to be tricky to be honest. So yeah, we need to be mindful of that. But anyway, these are the two settings that I use for this. As always, I'm using a fixed setup from iRacing. So I'm using the uh, Hockenheim ring setup and the only difference I change between the two is one has dry tires and one has wet tires. As always, the sessions are fixed so the weather stays consistent, but obviously it will change in sessions depending on what sort of rain we might have a chance of getting. So my session is fixed, but your sessions in a real race session will vary. So this is where we can compare the two and you kind of have to weave in and out the two depending on the track conditions. It is a challenge this iRacing week of weather and uh, yeah, should be fun. I, this, I'm recording this before week one's actually started. So I haven't done a race in the wet weather yet if there even was one. So it's gonna be interesting. We're all learning. Put down in the comments of what you found in wet weather driving as well in the races. It's gonna be interesting for all of us to learn and fingers crossed we haven't lost any safety rating and hopefully not too much IR. Anyway, that's not be waffling. Let's crack on with the guide. Right then, turn one comes up very, very quickly. It's going to be interesting on lap one, so bear this in mind. Quite a tricky corner, but this corner is nearly flat out. So we're using the turning marker there of 50. Big lift. Once you get to the apex, massive get on throttle. And don't run too wide here on the left-hand side because there is an off-track and miss the sausage curb on apex. Coming down to turn two, this is the second chance of carnage down here. So we're using the 50 marker there. Brake as heavy as you can. Use a little bit of the curbing. Probably second gear for this one. Get as close as you can to that red sausage curb there, but do not run over it because it'll bump you wide get on full throttle as early as you can and in the dry you can take this quite close and just look like clip the apex curb don't cut it too much but let the car drift out naturally to the right hand side here now bring a car back over to the left hand side now because i want to minimize distance to the hairpin this slipstream down here in this car will be absolutely insane so bear this in mind it's not even worth defending but aim for your braking point it'll be fine so we're just before the 100 market again Brake nice and heavy in a straight line all the way down to the curb, all the way down to the gearbox of the first gear before you start turning in. Get off, let the car be quite neutral for the apex of the corner and build up that throttle. You can virtually nail it in this car. It doesn't have a lot of grip to spin it out, but then get on acceleration as you can. Again, sausage curb on exit, so be cautious. This little kink here is absolutely flat out, so use the curbing here on the left-hand side just at the start, so just a turning marker. Don't worry about hitting the curb. Just be as smooth and uh, gentle on the steering as you can there just to keep our top speed nice and high. Braking zone for this one is going to be the end of this curbing right here, so just so we pass it stand on the brakes again straight line probably second gear for this one just to get the rotation little clip of turb let the car run wide because you need to bring it back over the left hand side for this little sort of kind of flat out kink here once the tires have warmed up and you're a bit light and full you can absolutely take that flat out but you will need a lift early on because you don't want to run wide here because of that red sausage curb so be cautious about that one keep the car on the left hand side of this one and we use it for a braking point for this another fun corner very very tricky this one you want to use sort of that cut out in the fence you just see above the concrete wall so just so we pass that little bit of a lift make sure you get that curb don't straddle it too much but make sure you don't run this far wide this really unsettles the car going over that bump so don't do what i did there stay more on the curb you'll be fine the change of the concrete or the tarmac there breaking a straight line get into the camber of the corner don't do a vet and go straight on but use the camber as well to really crank on the steering and get on throttle nice and early again don't run too far wide because there's a weird curb here the bottom's out you see the car bounce all over the place this little chicane here is just a left right kink so that's absolutely fine but don't worry about this right hander just get all the way over to the left hand side and then as we get over to the curb here little down a break fourth gear let the car be quite neutral for the corner use the downforce to slow you down as well keep on that steering angle be careful about that red sausage curb there and just keep them keep them two last corners and one big nice sweep corner you may want to go down to third for this last corner or third for the second to last and then change up to four for this last corner because this the second corner is faster than the first one so bear that in mind but that is us across the line 
Right then, turn one in the wet is a very, very different story. This is treacherous, so be cautious. Don't go near the curb because there's a giant puddle over there, but reckon way before the 100, nice and gentle, kind of go deep into the corner and miss that puddle on Apex. You've got just enough downforce here that you're okay, but be careful of this curb here. You can go on it, but look how ginger I am on the throttle and nice and gentle until I'm off onto the full tarmac instead of the curbing. Coming down to turn two now, again, you need to be cautious around here because this is where the carnage happened. Spray and visibility is going to be interesting, so what you want to do is when you get down here you're breaking just as you pass the 150 board i'm off the racing line and then as i did before sort of bring it back to the outside of the corner and i don't want to get anywhere near this apex because there is a nice chunky puddle there and i turn this corner more than i do in the dry I want to open up this kink as best I can. So I bring the car right to the right hand side and then ease it through this kink here. Watch the puddles on the apex there. I do clip in a little bit. I steer out of the wheel a little bit as well and minus that curb on the on the right hand side as well. You see what I did there on the compared to the dry lap, just take a completely different line, just on full throttle for longer down here to try and maximize my top speed all the way down to the hairpin in the wet. Again, off the racing line and you're breaking sort of at that green tarmac bit over there or whatever. Again, breaking a straight line, but bring it back to the racing line all the way down into first gear and again miss the apex go right around the outside found this much more better grip and then cut back for sort of an, a mid corner don't use any of this curb here so try and get mid track if you can to get the acceleration and the grip on the dirty side of the circuit this kink is interesting as well downforce is working for us at these speeds so again you're using the curb don't take it flat out because it's not a flat out corner but you can nip that little puddle there downforce is working for us so just be gentle on the throttle the car will feel twitchy but you should be okay once you get on the straight and narrow start the curb here on the right hand side break again off the line and we're breaking through the puddles to the outside of the corner and then we're whacking on the steering again we're going slow enough that we can kind of get to the apex but again avoid the puddle and the curbs just for spins easy on the throttle nice and gentle bring the car back to the left hand side and we turn in very very late for this corner to miss those massive puddles again take a shot every time i say puddle you'll be absolutely wasted by the end of this get on full throttle and get on the uh, exit as best you can get the car straight and then full throttle and you'll be golden go off the racing line now this corner i spun out a lot so take this one with a bit of caution i found being off the corner and breaking just as sort of that service road comes back in break nice and easy and again miss the curbing miss the apex as well for the giant puddle there so be cautious about that and i do run a little bit too wide here so watch my throttle trace i'm a little bit on the curb and a little bit going out of the puddle so i'm not gentle i'm not gentle on the throttle until i'm off it now this braking zone 100 meter and i'm a little bit too far to the right ideally i want my nose going a bit more to the left how that arrow is you see a big lock up going there there's like on the race line there's absolutely zero grip in that braking zone so be cautious get a massive wiggle on there so be careful of this corner Corner. but again get into the corner don't get down to the apex where that puddle is and be easy on the throttle coming out here now this chicane you kind of have to be on the racing line because you can't avoid it it does understeer massively and it puts me on this puddle here but that's fine i'm going in a straight line straight to this curb anyway once i get to this point this is where i have to start slowing the car down all the way down in second gear again miss the apex on this one there's a puddle just so you go over a little crest there you'll be absolutely fine big snap of oversteer as i'm crossing the grippy and the sort of rubbered in wet tires so i want to try and avoid it if i can go across it try and go over it in a straight line be careful of the exit curb as well as we're trying to get the grip down to try and accelerate over the line and i just normally try and get off the racing line just to be you know a good habit basically but that's us across the line for that one right then laps done and dusted fingers crossed these have helped you out fingers crossed we have actually a, a, a a sort of decent weather system this week i know i racing had a bit of issue in week one with it but they got it sorted so fingers crossed we should have a proper weather system particularly in the 30 minute race in the open session that is going to be very very interesting as mentioned i did use the iRacing fix setup in both the dry and the wet i only changed the tires the car is pretty okay to be honest it's got a lot of downfall so it does work in the wet weather just be cautious about those famous words that you're going to hear a lot just watch them puddles and watch them curbs. That'll be the way forward. But yeah, fingers crossed for a good week. I thoroughly enjoyed this in week one. So fingers crossed we have another good week in week two. Watch out for the bandits. Make sure you see the checkered flag and hopefully I'll see you on the track.